These are the bees accumulated from yesterday's hive work. So just grabbing random bees from random colonies, putting together a composite sample just to get an idea of where the mite counts are. Not too intensive because we've done the intensive mite washes. It's just more so continual monitoring to verify of what we've seen. Nests are basically broodless, going down into the nest and just a very, very slight little patch. We've got them packed right out. So there might be a little bit of eggs, just a little bit of brood, but pretty much for the most part, they are done. So just a random occasional colony that needs to be tipped back because the apivar strip fell down on the bottom board. Just taking the opportunity to grab a few random bees from a few random colonies throughout the work. So this is, you know, this doesn't, I think she's been taking washes uh, a little more than this. So there'd be about 300 bees in here. And the other sample container has much the same, just, you know, random. I can't tell if that's a piece of a de debris or if that's a mite. Nevertheless, that's good. Count that as a zero. What I'm doing <clears throat> in my mite treatment, there's a lot of beekeepers don't quite understand or they don't calculate what I've been trying to achieve with the products that I put into my colony this fall. I used Apivar again because my hands are tied and I need to use a product that I can put in right after the honey flow and act every day throughout the fall, the late summer into the fall time period, right up till now when the bees shut down. I need an active mite treatment to kill those mites throughout this entire period. And I also need that treatment to, uh, to work with less time. Like I'm putting the strips in, I can pull the strips out, but I don't have to go through multiple times on a schedule to apply it. We're so busy, we, hitting a schedule is so tough. So we need a product to be able to go into the colonies and work, right? That's all there is to it. So I use Apivar and I'm finding maybe the Apivar isn't as effective. So what I wanted to do is throw another hammer at them, like a curveball, I guess you could say, and have that treatment the product that I use, I need to do certain things. So the selection of the product I used is determined on what I want that product to do within the colonies. So I chose a thymol product, no product in particular, other than I'm just looking for the thymol. And I wanted that thymol, it is found to kind of, I don't know what it does, but it gets the bees behaving in a manner that maybe improves the efficacy of the amitraz within that apivar. Just the bee behavior maybe gets the bees more over the strip or maybe the bees, the mites on the bees that aren't killed by the apivar because we're seeing decreasing efficacy of apivar. My, my decrease could be up to like 55% or so uh, so maybe the thymol that is put into my colony after the apivar has been in a little while maybe helps finish those mites off, the ones, you know, they could be sick but not dead. So there might be a few things going on there I don't understand, but it's a flash treatment uh, drop, and I've seen that. The thymol also is as far as I'm concerned, as, as with my experience and past experiences, it will shut down that brood nest, which is very touchy this time of year, because once you shut down that brood nest late in the fall, you have a hard time getting it going again if you need it going. So I was very specific at the timing of my application of the thymol. I waited until I seen that brood nest develop, and I knew I had it. 
So later on into September, after I started seeing those mite counts escalate, and after I started seeing the brood nest decrease, I dropped the thymol in there and knocked all those residing mites off the bees. And that thymol, I think, ended that open brood nest, which then I followed up with syrup and packed them out. So after I did that, it exposed, it didn't allow the mites to hide at all, and allowed the residual thymol treatment and then the apivar within the colonies to, you know, the mites could not get away. I dropped them down and I'm counting zeros. So that's the product products that I used very specifically in kind of a synergetic interaction. And I do believe it worked because that's what my my washes are telling me and that's what the stickies told me as I was performing this treatment. I was able to uh, with the apivar, I do believe I was getting some efficacy, but it needed a bit of assistance. So the only problem is I'm still targeting those mites later on in that winter nest brood setup. So I'm not sure what kind of damage was already done to those bees, because what I did with the thymol is pretty much dropping the mites off and very effectively, which preserved that nest. We needed, I need something throughout the summer period to keep those mite counts low. So when they develop that winter nest, they're not developing with an infestation of mites, which then leads to viral problems. But from what I'm seeing within my nests, uh, they seem to be holding themselves well and the state of attrition has stopped to where they're holding more of a static type cluster. Kind of what I expect at this time of year. And I haven't seen any type of uh, collapse. Which is good. And I bet you if I would have, if I wasn't able to purge the mites off these bees, I bet you I would have started seeing, I bet you I'd see some attrition right now as his nest shrinks because of the mite pressure on those bees. Those mites, they, they feed off the bees. And I think they when they feed off the bee, they remove the bee's ability to winter or endure a long period of time. Whatever the bee might extract from the bee, the bee needs that. And I think when that happens, those bees recognize, shit, now I'm expendable and then they'll go into brood rearing, trying to replace themselves. And I've found that mite counts within my nests, over 5%, will promote longer season brood rearing. So, you know, you look down in the nest in the late fall, I like seeing a nest shut down and ready for winter. <clears throat> I don't like looking down in the nest and looking at sheets of open brood as they're trying to brood late, late, late into the season. A point of time when there's scarce resources and unfavorable weather conditions to build a brood nest. It just causes a spiral as, you know, just a decreased escalation, de-escalation downwards of the, the nest itself. And that's where you see collapse. Typically those collapsed colonies, you look down and it's, there's sheets of brood in there. Pretty pathetic looking brood, but they look like they were in active development pushing the envelope as far as they could. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a nest right now that's holding a static cluster. I'm looking for a nest that's heavy in feed. I'm looking for a nest that I was able to plug right out. I'm looking for a nest that has no brood. Tick, tick, tick.